Hi everybody, I'm Georgina Bisbee, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be talking about some top kitchen design decisions that you need to make when you're designing your kitchen or you're about to build your new kitchen. Uh, this is the situation that we're in right now, so we've just had the kitchen design around and it's helped us to make those final decisions that we were deliberating over. So I thought I'd share the advice that he shared with me, with you guys, in case you were trying to make similar decisions yourselves. And so just very quickly, if you're in the UK, we had Howden's over. Um, the reason we went for Howden's was because when we originally did our kitchen about eight years ago, my dad's friend who was helping us with the kitchen said, only go to Howden's because he'd had issues with some other suppliers. Um, we stuck with that. I was pretty happy with the experience, so I was gonna stick with them again this time round. But it was also something that was reinforced by what I'd seen on social media, on Instagram and Facebook groups, where when people have been talking about kitchen companies, Howden's seemed to always come out in a pretty good light. So when the Howden's guy came over, Chris, who was really, really friendly, I said to him, what's your secret? And he said that um, really their USP is that they're an in-stock business. And this video isn't in any way affiliated with Howden's, by the way, but I just thought I'd share this with you. So he said that basically means that you can pretty much get any part you need overnight most of the time, and it rarely takes very long in terms of lead times to get hold of things. So inevitably with a kitchen project, um, there often ends up being things that change, things that are missing, you know, small issues. So if you can get those things that you need straight away to finish the project, that's great. But also from the moment you order your kitchen, it can they can make it happen quite quickly as well. Whereas for a lot of kitchen companies, there's a lead time of say 10 weeks plus, which then when you're looking at just finding a small part that's missing can be a really, really frustrating process for the tradesperson and of course for the builder as well and, and for the homeowner as well. So um, that's why we're with Howden's at the moment. If you've had a fantastic experience with anyone else, please do comment below because I'm sure there are other good companies out there. So the first topic we talked about was having a double oven. I was pretty keen to have a double oven in our new kitchen, but Chris pointed out that actually a lot of people now are going for a single oven and a micro microwave grill as well um, because they find this is more uh, useful for their needs. So I thought about this, I thought it sounds like a really good option but he said one thing that he really thinks is that when you put the microwave grill above the double oven which is the natural way to put it, it actually poses a bit of a health and safety hazard because of putting liquids up high in the microwave and that that's not actually the best design. So he in particular advises people to, if they want to go for that combination, have them side by side rather than stacked on top. So that did scupper my plan somewhat, but as anyone who knows me will tell you, I'm very hot on my health and safety. So I think we're gonna go for a configuration of that. So that was the first point where we needed to make some slight alterations to our plans. So number two was the boiling water tap. Now I wasn't desperate to have a boiling water tap in our extension, but I know they're all the rage, they're the latest thing, and some people seem to swear by them. Um, what I was particularly concerned about was that um, what I'd read when I was researching them was that they're just gonna become ubiquitous and uh, every house is gonna have one eventually. So I felt like maybe it was pointless resisting them and in order to future-proof our kitchen, we should just have one installed. However, Chris reassured me that he didn't really think that was the case. He could see how they were a bit of a fad in some ways and obviously if they were really important to you and you felt that they were gonna change your life, brilliant. But if you didn't and you didn't want them, there shouldn't be any pressure to have one because actually it may well be something that comes and goes anyway. Number three was the color of the kitchen units themselves. So obviously white and gray have been uh, quite popular over the past couple of years and that is a color theme that we've used elsewhere in our house and we're kind of building our palette on a quite a neutral white and gray color scheme. However, I do think that it can look a bit soulless and I do think you need a bit of an injection of color. Um, in our bedroom, for example, where we've got the white walls and the gray wardrobes, we've just started to add some color in terms of the bedspreads and it really does make the room. Um, so we're looking at doing the same in the kitchen, but he did confirm that dove gray is still their uh, most popular color by far at the moment. So it seems like people are still very much going for those kind of color schemes. In terms in terms of kitchen worktops, if you're not looking at the high end, top of the range uh, end of the market, which we're not at the moment because our children are still quite young and we didn't want to spend an arm and a leg on the uh, worktop at this stage in our lives. So he said that the oak effect laminate is a really popular choice and uh, looks pretty good and is pretty durable. Another point we discussed was reusing some of our kitchen, our existing kitchen units. Now they're about eight years old, which to my mind isn't that old. I know in kitchen life that probably is quite old in actual fact, but waste not, want not. I felt if we didn't have to throw them out, it'd be really nice to reuse them somewhere. His advice was that it would be absolutely fine to reuse them in the utility room, but in actual fact, we'd probably get frustrated if we use them again in the kitchen because kitchen design has come on quite a long way in that time. And therefore um, things like soft close hinges um, and other such features don't feature in our old units and we would probably quite like to have them in our new ones. 
And the point that's probably the most controversial on the list was uh, the induction hob. So we're still deciding whether or not we want to go for a gas hob or an induction hob. My instinct tells me gas hobs because I know them, I'm familiar with them, and I'm a little bit suspicious of induction hobs if I'm completely honest with you. Now, I thought he was gonna tell me I was a Luddite and I needed to get the times and just get an induction hob. I was actually really reassured that he didn't, and he said that he prefers gas hobs himself as well, but he obviously understands that it's, you know, horses for courses, and everyone there, you know, has a different appreciation of things. Um, I brought up my safety concerns, which I know are ridiculous because I know that the induction hobs have been proven to be the safest option possible. But I just said that I have this kind of uncomfortable feeling about them, that I don't fully trust them. And he said that's completely reasonable and uh, it, it, I'm not alone in that. <laughs> um, and that it's not absolutely essential to have an induction hob, although they do seem to be becoming increasingly popular, even in you know professional kitchens, um, seem to be moving to induction hobs now. So there's definitely a big market for them. They've definitely got a lot of fans and it's another topic where I'm very open to being persuaded that they're the best thing ever. Um, but there's just something that I can't quite bring myself to completely trust about them. So there we go, that's my honest answer. If you're the same as me, don't feel bad about it. And if you have an induction hob and you love it, then just go and enjoy it, that's absolutely fine. And the last tip he gave us, which was a really good one, was something that we'd actually done in our original kitchen. And that was, if you're looking at the splashback area, um, think twice about tiling because that's actually what dates a property really quickly. He said he can always tell the age of a kitchen as soon as he walks in and looks at the tiles. So if you just paint this area rather than tiling it, or even he said there are obviously splashback panels you can use, but generally they're made of stainless steel and they're really, really difficult to clean and they always look smeary as does glass, but glass is a bit better, he said. Um, so if you want a simple, uh, easy to maintain kind of area, then you're actually better off going for paint because the paints are so durable these days, you can clean them and you can also change them and uh, brighten up and uh, update your kitchen as you feel um, the need to. So that's it. They were the top tips that he shared and they've just helped us to make those final decisions in our kitchen. Uh, of course, it's not an exhaustive list. And if you've got any great tips for kitchen design, please do uh, post them in the comments below. And any other feedback in general, I've really enjoyed your comments so far in this series and also the little bits of useful advice that people have been sharing as well um, have really helped me along my way and I'm sure will help other people as well. But that's it for today. So if you enjoyed this video, as always, please do give it the thumbs up and uh, of course subscribe if you enjoyed the content and don't forget to hit the bell button to make sure you get a notification when there's a new video. But that's all for today. Bye bye.